In this session, I am going to explain about potentiometry. First, let us see the instrumentation of potentiometric titration. Here, we are taking two electrodes immersed in analyte solution, which are connected through potentiometer. Here, one electron acts as reference electrode, and the an another one is act as indicator electrode. This can be represented as reference electrode salt bridge that is in contact with the analyte solution that is in contact with the indicator electrode. Now let us see what is reference electrode. As we know, it is an electrode having a known potential that remains constant at constant temperature and independent of the composition of the analyte solution. It is always treated as anode in potentiometric measurements. Most common examples are calomel electrodes and silver silver chloride electrodes. Next, let us see what is indicator electrode. It is an electrode having a potential that varies with variation in the concentration of an analyte. That means as concentration changes, potential also changes. Example is metallic indicator like a platinum electrode or glass electrode. Next, let us see the theory of potentiometric titration. This type of titration involves the measurement of the potential of indicator electrode with respect to reference electrode as a function of titrant volume. Here, titrant volume means the volume of the solution consumed in burette. So, compared to conventional titrations, instrumental analysis like uh, potentiometry gives more accurate data. Uh, these are useful even for colored and turbid solutions. This type of titrations can be ca classified as uh, precipitation titrations, complex formation titrations, neutralization titrations, and redox titrations. From burette, the solution is added in a small increment, like uh, first we have to add 0.5 centimeters. Uh, 0.5 cm cube, then 1 cm cube, then 1.5 cm cube, or then 2 cm cube, and so on. After each addition, we have to wait for a certain period to measure the potential. Next, let us see the applications. This potentiometric titration is used to determine the pKa of uh, weak acids. It is applicable for redox titrations, which is also applicable for precipitation titrations. Now let us see the potentiometric estimation of FAS. The titration of FAS versus potassium dichromate is represented as follows. Here, Fe2 plus in FAS gets uh, oxidized to Fe3 plus and the chromium 6 plus of potassium dichromate get reduced to chromium 3 plus. In this system, we are using two electrodes, calomel electrode and reference electrode, which act as anode and uh, platinum electrode as uh, indicator electrode, which act as cathode. This can be represented as anode side calomel uh, cell representation that is mercury, mercury mercurous chloride, potassium chloride that is in contact with iron species that is uh, Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus that is in contact with platinum. At anode, oxidation takes place. Mercury is oxidized to mercurous chloride with the liberation of electrons. At cathode, reduction takes place. During the titration, potassium dichromate oxidizes Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus, 
This changes the relative concentration of Fe3 plus versus Fe2 plus. Then the potential of the indicator electrode is calculated by using the formula that is electrode potential of platinum EPT is equal to standard electrode potential of platinum that is E0 PT plus 0 0.0591 by N. Here N value is 1 because N is nothing but the number of electron changes from Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus. Here number of electron changes from Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus is 1. So here N value is 1 into log concentration of uh, Fe3 plus by concentration of uh, Fe2 plus. Here this one is because in platinum electrode it deals with FAS solution. So we are taking the ratio of concentration of uh, Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus. So by using this uh, equation we can uh, determine the potential of uh, platinum electrode. Now let us see how to determine the EMF of the cell. We know the formula E cell is equal to, to E cathode minus E anode. Here uh, the platinum electrode is act as cathode. So E platinum is nothing but uh, E naught PT plus 0 0.0591 by 1 into log concentration of uh, Fe3 plus by concentration of Fe2 plus minus uh, here calomel electrode is act as anode. So here we are writing E calomel. In this equation, E calomel is constant, and uh, as uh, potassium dichromate uh, we are adding, the concentration of Fe3 plus goes on increasing. And hence, E cell is also increasing. At the end point, there is a sharp increase in EMS due to the complete oxidation of ferrous ions to ferric ion. That means the oxidation of Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus will take place. Hence, uh, there will be a sharp increase in the EMF will take place. So uh, by plotting a delta E by what delta V versus volume of potassium dichromate in uh, centimeter cube, we will get this curve. From this curve, we can uh, determine the equivalence point that is E. Then the strength of FAS that is N FAS uh, can be calculated by multiplying the equivalence point that is volume of potassium dichromate with strength of uh, potassium dichromate divided by volume of FAS, which we are taking. Then uh, by multiplying the strength of uh, FAS with the equivalent weight of uh, FAS, we will get the amount of uh, FAS in 1000 ml of the solution.